Foul out and the French are advancing. Yeah, it's Thierry Emery on the counterattack. Beautiful loop ball. Going to get a foul in the back there. Push down. And this is going to be Zinedine Zidane territory. This could be w really audacious if it were to go in. He's going to loop this one up. It's going to be Zinedine Zidane from the free, free kick. Not a very large run up. Takes a shot. Takes a goal. Oh, no. Denied by the goalkeeper right to his left. And that one either struck the post or the keeper and then the post. That was a beautiful save by the keeper. Just punched it out. Zidane could have knocked that one in there. And I think Lady Luck is on the side of the keeper. Now we're going to see a run by the Italian. He has a breakaway. He has a shot. He has a goal, folks. Beautiful run by Vieri down the center of the field. Takes the shot at the top of the key and buries the ball on the keeper. It's a 1-1 game. Yeah, Christian Vieri leveling up the scores there. Nice work by Vieri. Have to say it's been all France up to this point, but Vieri there bringing the Italian side back into it, and rightly so. Here comes Zinedine Zidane once again in Zinedine Zidane territory. He's about to latch onto this free kick. There it is. He hits it. It's weak. It's goal oh! from Zinedine Zidane from about 30 yards out by the left touchline. The keeper has to be embarrassed by that. It touched, it bounced past him. I'm not watching basketball. It was a bounce pass, and it just got by him. What an aloof shot by Zidane. Now we're going to see the Frenchman trying to clear the ball off their end of the field. They don't want to give the Italians the chance to tie this game up. They're passing back and forth, trying to get a run down the line. We're going to see a cross back to uh, Pieri, and he's going to send that long ball down to... Uh, DeSaley, who can't handle it and gets it out of bounds. Yeah, it's going to be Sylvain Perotta to take the throw in. Now he's going to slip it inside, down the left-hand side. It's going to be to his centre-back. Thierry Henry pressurising up. That goes the long ball down to the right-hand side. Panucci back to Perotta. Perotta to Panucci. Over it goes. Pa uh, Christian Vieri cannot get onto the long ball. It's Fabian Bartos to clear it down the right-hand side. Forward it comes. Churam puts it forward to Zidane. Going to be cleared up by the defender. That is Zambrotta. Over it comes to the halfway line. And this game is getting lost in the midfield. It is. And it's, I think it has to do with the fact that both of them chose to go with a 4-3-3 formation, which is going to make it a tight game in the midfield. But we got a run here on the side, and unfortunately, Henry can't handle it. Panucci with the throw-in, going to see the long ball from Toddy, and uh, he's going to send it up to, how, now how do you say that name, McKaylee? Claude McAuley. McAuley. With the ball of Chelsea superstar there. Forward it comes to Thierry Henry. Back the way Zidane now backing away from the ball. Up it comes. Hoofed up towards Christian Vieri. Going to be brought down by the midfield. Out to the left-hand side. It's Cristiano Zanetti down the left-hand side. Going to put it down. This is Del Piero down the left-hand side of Juventus. Puts it forward. Great ball. Vieri going to strike it. Going to lob it all to the keeper. And the keeper just, just going to get that one. Right. That French keeper has long, long arms. And if he can get in front of that ball, you are not going to be able to sneak a goal past him. Now the French looking to attack, looking to get something open up. Pierre is to Henry. Henry can get a good turn. He can't. Nice challenge and step by Panucci. Panucci sending the ball down to Nesta. Nesta to Zanetti. Zanetti now going to try and get the ball upfield. Going to try to find the line. He's got a run. He's beaten his man. Can he get across? A little pushing and shoving and a beautiful exhibit of defense by the French player there. Yeah, very tight game so far, Ed. 40 minutes gone in the first half, and it's just 1-2 in favor of the French team. Now, it's Gallus to hit it forward. Going to be challenged by Perotta there as he does so. Perotta going to win it back in the center of the field. It's going to be Thierry Henry to give chase to the loose ball down the left-hand side. The it forward. Zinedine Zidane going to rise to the challenge. It's going to be Benixi Lizarazu down the right-hand side. Forward it comes. Lizarazu on the wrong side of the field. Puts it down. Cross goes back into the middle. Thierry Henry just it down. Puts it back to Makaleli. Back to Vieira. Across to Perez. Out to the left hand side and that move is going to be broken up by Fabio Cannavaro. Yes. Forward it comes. McAuley breaks it up and we're still stuck on the halfway line. Forward it comes to Christian Vieri. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting lost up in the action. Vieri can't handle the ball. Kicks it out of bounds. We're going to see a throw in by the French. Now France to Thurman. Thurman to Galeas. Galeas going to, nope, he's going to turn it. Send that long ball way downfield to Perez. Perez now with the handle. Trying to get it up to Henry. Can't get the through ball. Beautiful step by McAuley. And McAuley whoops the pass. Yeah, not so good there by Claude McAuley. Yeah. Intercepted by Perez down the left hand side. It's going to be looped into Thierry Henry. Trezeguet is waiting at the middle, but it's go gone long. Out it goes wide. Ju Chilram cannot pick that one up. And it's going to be Zanetti to clear the danger. Denied by Benici Lizarazu. Puts in his own cross the Bayern Munich start. Puts it towards Patrick Vieira. Lost it away though by the player now. And Del Piero is going to make his way forward over the halfway line. One touch passing here by the Italians. Going to put it up to the left hand side. Del Piero puts it wide. Beautiful one touch pass there. Now down the left hand side comes Cameron Renese. Tackled brilliantly by Gallas to break up that move. Yes, get those center mids down there to help with defense, to change change the, the pace of these uh, Italian strikers. 
The Italian is now trying to get something going. Sends a pass to no one but a defender who kicks it long ball down the field to kill the clock. And as we go into the locker room, it is 2-1 in favor of the German using this deadly, deadly French team. I have to say, though, that this has been a very, very close game. If I were Schmeiser, I would be uh, maybe a little bit concerned about that because right now Omniosis has had a blinder of a match, keeping it down to just 2-1, and especially with the lethalness of the, this French side, you would expect more goals so far from the French side, but well, well played to Omniosis to deny that. Yes, and now we're going to see France. They have a chance. They're making a run down the left hash mark. He's going to put the ball up. He's got it in the air. They had it, the goal! Beautiful cross to Zidane who buries it in the goal. If you give Zidane a chance, he will put the ball in the net. I'm sorry, was I just saying that uh, he was doing well to contain it to 2-1? Yes, you were. Now, cross down the left-hand side, well kept in by Zanetti. Forward it goes, Del Piero just can't reach onto that one. And that attack is going to be broken back up. French now coming over the midfield with Thierry Henry. Going to slip the through ball up to Zidane. Backs it away. Zidane loses out. But down to Zambrotta on the left-hand side. Long ball up to, uh, to Francesco Totti. Forward it goes. The French hit to set this one. And they're breaking up the attacks really well. Yes, and now Lazuro gave Zidane a chance. Can he get to the ball? No. Yes, he has the cross. The shot. And it is just outside of the box. Buffoon is going to have the goal kicks, going to send the long ball to the center of the field. Can Italy make up this two goal difference? Because you know what? This is not an aggregate match anymore. And at the end of this game, if it's 3 1, you are down one game and you want to win two. Yeah, forward it goes to Thierry Henry. Put forward down to Perez. Perez back to his Arsenal teammate, Thierry Henry, bearing down on the left hand side. Perotta cannot get back to him. Panucci's going to make the challenge, but he has to be careful. He's on a yellow card. Panucci can't get back at it. It's Zidane to rise. It's Zidane to score. One hat trick for Zinedine Zidane. And it's 4 1 to the French. And they've really come alive in the second half. They have come alive in this second half. And Italy has to be kicking themselves. He knows he's going to have to make some adjustments. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to change his team formation probably to a 4-4-2, which he does, going to move to a neutral position, but I think he should be more of an attacking mentality for these players because they are down three goals in this game, and in a six-minute game in real, in real time, you need to try and get goals in there fast. It's the 56-minute time. is ticking on them, and the Italians are trying to advance. They know they need to get something going, and they're passing the ball back and forth. Nice one, touches. Del Perio now getting a cross ball through, but a beautiful step by Lazario to break up that scoring opportunity. Yeah, nice work by, by, by Lazario. And right now what they're trying to do, because they were failing the Italians to get any form of control in the midfield, what they wanted to do, they wanted to bring down an extra man from attack and just beef up that midfield, switch back to an almost British style of play now. Four comes and brought it down to the left-hand side. Remembering that the British style of play was England, who beat Wales today 2-0. Fantastic <laughs> stuff there, Frank Lampard with the beauty of goal. Now, forward it comes up to the halfway line. Thierry Omri back to Patrick Vieira. Lifts it up over the top. It's going to be bro broken up there by Cannavaro, but he can only head it down to Zinedine and Zidane. Oh, nicely broken up there by Barata to deny the danger. That was a beautiful step by Verrata. Now the French passing back and forth, trying to get their strikers to get a set piece going. A beautiful cross in the center of the field. He traps the ball, but Vieri misses the opportunity. He keeps it in play, however, and Zidane just can't get the handle. Excellent stop by Lazaro, though, with the cross and the head. No! Nice job by the keeper to step in and deny that scoring opportunity, which would have made it a 5-1 game. Yep, now... Karen and Aze trying to put Vieri through. All oh, ball intercepted by Claude McAuley of Chelsea. Puts it forward up to the midfield. Going to be brought down by Alessandro Nesta. No, denied that. Thierry Henry to Pires. Back down to McAuley. Forward it goes. Thierry Henry now on this left-hand side. Switching it in. Going to cut inside now. Thierry Henry to take a drive from the edge of the area. Blocked by Nesta. And the keeper was all over the place there. And that could have been a goal. That could have been a goal. And he didn't need to take the direct shot. He should have just volleyed it up over the keeper's head because the keeper was out of the box. He overcommitted on that situation. That was a missed opportunity by the French. Now we're going to see a free kick for Nessa. Nessa sends the ball over to the left hash. Beautiful chest trap, or chest trap by Zanetti. Or was it Galeas? I think it was, was Galeas. Sorry. Yeah, William Gallus there of Chelsea. <laughs> doing enough there to break that up. Now, down it comes to the left-hand side. Put forward to Christian Vieri. The Italians have been slightly more in this since they changed their formation. But still, no end product from the Italians. And really, they need to start getting the ball down the wing or sustain push through the middle that the French team can't break up. Because when they do push through the middle, there are only three or four options. And the Italians are able to get just out-crowd them and deny each and every one of those options. 
Now France trying to get something going. The Italians pushing and shoving out there. They've got to feel the pressure. They've got to feel the anxiety, knowing that this French team is outdoing them and besting them in this best of three match. The Italian looking to get across. The ball is up, but nice step by uh, Trezo and to put the head on the ball and give an advantage for the French, who missed the opportunity with the ball out of the out of bounds. And Camarosi for Italy with the throw in. Now it comes to David Trezeguet. We've not heard much from David Trezeguet today. How many times can we have said that? Another football scene, a French team with David Trezeguet doing mm -hmm. very little, but he has one inside a corner, which is going to be what in here by Zinedine Zidane, Marcel Desailly making the run, making the run, making the header, making the goal, and it's Claude McAlele with his second, 5-1 to the French, and this first game is almost done and dusted. Yes, and the man of this match has to be Zidane, he's got the hat trick, and he's got two assists on those goals to McAlele off of the corners. You know what? Zidane is the perfect package. He is a world-class player. Now we're going to have a breakaway. A beautiful through ball to Zidane. Zidane with the pass. The shot by Trezo and a nice punch save by the keeper. It's going to set up a corner for Perez. Yeah, nice important save there. Robert Perez to whip it in. It's Thierry Henry to jump. It's Thierry Henry to score. And in fact, it's that's with David Trezeguet there. Beautiful goal. And the French team are running riot. In the second half, they're up 4 to nil. It combined with the first half, of course, it's 6-1. But right now, Schmeiser is showing quite why he is such a hot property in the FIFA 2004 world. Yeah, Schmeiser, the favorite for this uh, this tournament, I'm told. Now we're going to see some more line change or playing adjustment by the Italian team. The Italian switching to the wing ball. That seems to be what's been working for most of the players, getting that ball out to the wingers. We've got to make those runs down the side hash marks put the cross balls up and get one of their players get in front of the keeper and put a head on the ball. Now Italy's got a chance, a beautiful through ball. See the hand is up, nice chest trap and a beautiful execution by the defense there. A little pushing and shoving, nothing's called breaking up that scoring opportunity. Yep, nice chest, a nice break up there. William Gallas just throwing his body in the way to stop anything from getting through. That's the desperation of the French team to hold their lead. Yeah, Thierry Omri tries to turn, but oh, just narrowly offside when that ball was played. Yeah, it, it looked a little bit more than narrow for me, though. Narrow's 10 yards off, that's what it looked like. And there's a head on the ball, and Thurman now is going to try and get a turn. Send the ball up to Henry. Henry now to Perez. Perez going to make a run down the line, but an excellent step by Panucci. However, Panucci whiffs on the pass, and now the French are looking to score again. Perez with the head, with the cross. The, the ball is just mishandled on the chest strap, and the Italians are doing everything they can to get this ball off their side of the field. It's still in play. The cross is up, and the shot. Beautiful goal by Zidane. He's got four on the day, folks. This is pretty much over as a competition now, as we're now up 7-1 to one here. Schmeiser, a little bit of a late starter you have to feel, but really got going in this second half. Not much doing from the Italian side. It is, of course, controlled by the Dutch player that is Omniosis, and uh, he can... Omni-Rocket. Omni-Rocket, sorry. That's all right. And he has... Uh, he really has nothing to offer right now. He has nothing to offer right now, but he's not out of this game. If this was going to be an aggregate match, I'd say he is, but it's not. This is a best of three, folks. He has an opportunity to win these next two matches and walk away with it, but he has to play better than he did there. 9-1 was the final score. How embarrassing. Yeah, not so good there. We're going to start it up once again. Now, is it best of three, home and away, home and away, home and away? Uh, I think so. Wow, so the potential for six matches there. It could be quite a long, quite a long game. Um, no, no, I think it's just best of three home, away, home is how it would go. They're only going to play three games. I don't think they're going to do six. Ooh. Well, it could be interesting here. Now, Ed, what I don't understand is quite why Schmeiser was such the late starter because he was on top form throughout that match, uh, throughout that second half. But what was the Italian doing in the first half that was just stopping the goals from going in? I'm not sure. I think I think maybe the German was going to try and see how this uh, how this Netherlands player Omni Rocket was going to use that Italian team if he's going to use them as as we've seen so many of these players with the long balls down the down the sidelines with the cross or like we saw done quite brilliantly yesterday by the Brazilian squad with. Uh, who was using that guy? Uh, was it? Boy, I can't remember the team. 
but uh, had the great through balls in the center of the field, giving him a chance to take shots right in front of the goal. And uh, I think he just was trying to fill the man out. Now we're going to see some team management going on by the home team, which is Omni Rocket in this situation. Oh, no, it's actually the German Schmeier um, making his adjustments, sticking with that 4-3-3. Four, four, three, three. Going to clear the ball out of bounds and allow the uh, the Netherlands player, Omni Rocket, to make his adjustments for his team. Yeah. Now, what, I, what I'm struggling to comprehend here, Ed, is uh, where Schmeiser can possibly go wrong because after that performance, he was fantastic. And after that second half, you have to ask quite whether, what, whether game number one, it, who could win out of that game? Because if game number one and Schmeiser come up in the final, I think I'll wet myself because that game is <laughs> just uh, going to be fantastic. Those two players have it all to offer. Right. The German team is definitely the team to watch here in this uh, WCG. We're going to see a quick run out by France. The cross is up. The head is on. But the keeper steps out, makes a beautiful punch save, and Italy is driving ahead with a nice through ball to the right hash mark. Yep. Here it comes from it, from the Italians. It's pulled McCullough. They bring it down the left-hand side. Forward it goes. Roman Perez gets it up on the left-hand side. Going to hit it long up to Thierry Henry. Backs it away. Through comes Thierry Henry. Going to hit it up long to Zinedine Zidane. Chest down. Not going to happen there. And as he does so, we're now going to take a look around. It's going to be Alessandro Nesta to make the substitution. Mauro Camaronesi comes off. And coming on for the Italian side is Gennaro Ivan Gattuso of AC Milan. Four comes the cross. It's going to be Zidane on the edge of the penalty area. So it's Vieri turning around. Couldn't pick off the shot. Just crowded out there by the French defenders. Yeah, Henry did a nice job of clearing that ball out, breaking up that scoring opportunity for the Italians. The Italians got to get something going. He's got to win this game so he can take it to the best of three. And uh, right now, the center mid is there in the in the middle of the field. The center of the field is where this game is being fought. And the Italian with a dirty push in the back of Zidane. Zidane, the playmaker. Let's see what he can do. Takes the short pass, a little give and go, broken up as the Italians check space. De Perro steps in, clears the ball down, and now the Italians trying to make an advance. Yes, they are. It's Cristiano Zanetti bringing the forward to Perotta, out wide to Catoso, the new man, taking a ball, taking a, the ball is taken off him by Marcel Desailly, and Desailly brought down, apparently unfairly there, on the left-hand side there, and it's going to be Desailly to get himself back up, take the free kick, hit it up into Zambrotta's area, as it Dan going up against it, Zinedine and Zidane, brought down on the edge of the penalty area, and, that, and this, Ed, this is where Zidane can win. That is a very, very stupid stupid foul committed by the Italians. Zidane staring down the wall. The wall standing strong. The ball is up and thank goodness for the post. It saves the keeper from having to hang his head in shame on missing that uh, goal. But Ed, here come the Italians. And the here Itali comes Alessandro Del Piero bearing down a goal. Takes a shot. Takes a goal! Del Piero for the Italians. Game on! It's 7-2 on aggregate. <laughs> no, it's not aggregate though. That's the thing. We're looking at the best of three, my friend. Yeah, so if he wins this game, we're going to a third match. That was a beautiful goal. And now we have another scoring opportunity by the Italians. The cross is up, but the keeper steps in. Punch makes a beautiful punch save. Can the French clear the ball off their end of the field? They can. It's cleared out. And the keeper, Barthez, gets the goal kick. Yep, nicely done there by Alessandro Del Piero to put his side one up. Now the omen, um, omen is on the French to get the goal. And a little bit of an offside there by Thierry Henry. About a, about a bus load offside. <laughs> <laughs> free kick going to be hit upfield by Cristiano Panucci. Panucci with the free kick. You're going to get ahead on it by Canarvo, Can, or Canarvo, however you say his name. It doesn't matter because he's giving these Italians a chance. A beautiful through ball to the right hash mark. But what's going on here? It looks like we have a foul. Panucci now with the free kick. Yeah, going to be hit strong upfield to Del Piero, the goal scorer. Try to turn, try to take the shot. He does turn, but there he turns into a brick wall by the name of Patrick Vieira. Forward it comes. David Trezeguet on the ball now. Lord McAleer going to bring it up over the halfway line. Going to put it out wide to Thierry Henry down this left-hand side. And denied once again by the ever-present Panucci. Yeah, Panucci with a beautiful step there, sends the long ball down the field. However, nobody there to make the, to intercept that pass except for the Frenchman. However, we're seeing the Italians coming alive. We have a shot, an opportunity, oh. and Gattuso with the goal. That was beautiful. Forza Italia is the goal because Gattuso has put them two up, and Schmeiser is in trouble here, Ed. He could go out, well, he could lose this match here. 
But he, remember, there's still a long time on the clock. It doesn't take long for a goal to happen, and the French side have got goals written all over their forehead. They do have goals all over their forehead, and now we're going to see the Italians saying, we've got goals all over our forehead too, as they make a beautiful through ball and advance uh, again. He's doing. He's taking it right down the middle. He's taking a different uh, approach than the French team is, and we're going to see another through ball. We're going to see man taking a run on the right. Perotti with the cross, and the, oh! oh free header, no. he misses it. The keeper overcommitted on that one, and it went over his head, but no one to follow it up, and the French are going to try and uh, get a point off this one. The French team are living on the edge of their seats here. The ball came up. Vieri was just underneath him. Here comes Cristiano Vieri once again. Takes a shot, and the save was there by Bartes. And Ed, what has happened to the Germans? I don't know. The Germans may be feeling the pressure of being at the WCG, folks, because he's letting this game go. However, we did see in the last match that the that the, uh, the the Omni Rocket from the Netherlands came out ahead in the first half and lost it in the second. And that German French connection, as we're going to call it here at, uh, right now, <laughs> just exploded with eight goals in the second half of our last match. Let's find out what's going to happen here. Now it's. Perez, four to Zidane, chest it down, leaves Arazu going down the right-hand side, bombing it down, there's Cristiano Zanetti to break up the play, picked up by Zambrotta, tries to clear it up, second chance, he gets it away, second stab at the cake, Vieira takes it on the chest, brings it away, and the captain of France, not going to give this one up without a fight. No, and that was an excellent, excellent challenge by Vieri, who gives them the chance with the throw in. Lazou with a ball, miss, miss chance there, and the Italians are going to make another advance down the field. Can they get a goal? They can't. The ball is cleared to Zidane. Zidane's got a chance. He's taking a run. Can he handle the ball? And the foul. I think that was probably a good foul taken there because if you get Zidane breaking on that right hash mark and the cross to Henry, that would be a goal for sure. We got the small wall, three men standing strong. Zidane looking for the bottom right post, takes the shot. The ball is up, and the keeper, I think, just knocks it out of bounds. I'm not sure whether the keeper got a touch that or around the post. Yeah, it just went around the post, in fact. And now Gianluca Buffon going to hit it upfield, forward to Zambrotta. Zambrotta now on this left-hand side, going to lay it down that left-hand side to Del Piero. Del Piero heads it down to Francesco Totti of Roma. Puts it back across. We have an al uh, we have um, Vieri joining the fight here. Totti now picks up the ball, puts it back. Vieri on the ball. Can he chest it down to the right-hand side? Oh, just blocked out by two French men there. And that's what they've got to do. They've got to just get the bodies in the way. They do. And we're going to see the Italians now still trying to get a scoring chance. They want to put this game out of reach for this German team. I think if Vini wants to do that, he's got to put at least two more goals up. The ball is up. The chest trap. The turn. Beautiful step by uh, McKaylee there to break that one up. Yeah, and as it fell off McAuley, it was just a stamp shot there going in by Del Piero. Nothing had really come in from that. Now, down comes Perez. A bombing down to his left own side there. And he's going to put forward. It's going to go to half time, Ed. And my understanding now is that it's played on matches. So best of what each It's three played matches. on matches, yes. So it's 1-0, basically, in matches. Is and if the Italians win this, it'll be 1-1, and we'll go to the third game. That is correct. And the German knows that going into the second half. We'll see if he makes some adjustments. He's down two goals to nil. And Italy gets to start us off. Italy now sending the ball... Wow, there's two Vieri's on there. One playing for Italy, one playing for that's France. Vieira and Vieri. Oh, I see. That's a, a French pronunciation and an Italian it pronunciation. An an France now has an opportunity making a run. Zidane, can he get to the ball? He can. He's going to put the cross up. The keeper's out of the box, but he well steps played. in and does what needs to be done and just gobbles that ball up not giving Henry a chance to get ahead on it. Very important catch there by Buffon to clear up the danger. Now it's in it in Zidane to put it forward. Uh, Patrick Vieira picks up the ball. Puts it down to the left-hand side where Trezeguet will give chase. He'll just keep this one in play. Puts, he's going to pull the cross up now. Blocked out by the Italians and they've learned that from Marcel Dessaye just to get a body in the way and stop the goal from happening. Right, and that was a nice nice heads up play on the defense by it's Italy if you can get the ball out of bounds you can get your strikers and your midfielders down there you can break up the pace of the Italians and look what's going on Italy has a chance the ball is up oh oh he cannot settle it a beautiful step by Henry to get the ball out to Zidane on the right hash mark we're gonna see a cross back to Henry to Perez Perez gonna make a run down the left hash mark he's gonna get a through ball Henry now the keeper out of the box he's gonna get a chance the cross is up the ball is is in the air the trap the shot and the keeper all over that one 
Wow. Good chance there for the French team, but so far, with 35 minutes left on the clock here, the Italians still with that precious two-goal advantage, and they're going to try and capitalize on it more. Forward comes the ball, it's Del Piero out to Vieri. Looked like a bit of a shove in the back, or could it have been offside? It was just a little bit offside. That was a close call. Now the French with the free kick. Galeas puts the ball in the air. He's got a man. He's got Trezo. Trezgo now to Zidane. Zidane has open space, but a beautiful step. Topo, no! He's going to make a scoring shot, and he doesn't get the chance. The keeper says, nope, not today. We are walking away with this match. 59 minutes on the clock. Going to turn to 60. Italy now making a run. Got a through ball to who? To no one but Perez, who sends the ball to... Henry. Yep, Henry now in an offside position there <laughs> by a mile. <laughs> and um, it's going to be hit back upfield by Fabio Cannavaro. Puts it forward up to the halfway line where Vieri is waiting. Picks up the ball, tries to put it out to Gattuso. Cannot do so. French Hearts now in their mouths as they're trying to get some possession. They need two goals at least to draw this. Cross comes across. Head is up. Vieri, it's uh, Thierry Ray that's in there. David Trezeguet buries it away in the back of the net. And that's 2-1. Trezeguet has been quiet this whole match, but maybe that goal is going to wake him up. The Italians now with the ball in. We're going to see a pass back to Zambroda. Zambroda is going to send the ball to Vieri. Vieri, can he get a turn? No, a beautiful step by Mekaleli to break that one up. And however, the Italians have an opportunity. A breakaway, a shot, oh. and a beautiful save by the keeper who just gets to it and knocks the ball away. Yeah, the Italians so close to making that 2-3-1 and really finishing this game off. But here come the French down the left-hand side. It's the area ready to bring up the cross, Trezeguet rises, great save by the keeper to push it away, and it falls to an Italian player right in the center of that defense. All right, now Italy's making an advance. They're trying to get something happening, but a nice step by Henry is going to break up that momentum. Henry now making turn, dancing around these Italian players. We're going to try and see a through ball or a cross over to the left hash mark, and he just sends it way too far, throw in to Vieri. I have to say right now, I'm cheering for the Italians. We've seen such of a German dominance. It will be lovely to see an Italian, uh, uh, an Italian uh, played by the Dutch player, of course. Love to see one of them give it a real cl close game and see what they can do with it. Can they do anything, though, with that? Up it comes through the midfield. Played down to the left-hand side. Denied by Vieira. Back again, they get the ball. Puts it forward to Alessandro Del Piero. Right outside the D of the halfway line. Forward it comes. Claude McAuley presses down on Perotta. Brings out wide to, Chris, uh, to Perotta again, but tries to put it back across to Vieri. Vieri challenged there on the edge of the penalty area. Going to slip it back through to Cristiano Vieri. Takes the shot. Go for the Italians. Christian Vieri makes it 3-1, and this could be game set a match for the Italians. It definitely might be, and you know why that goal happened is because of the battle in the center of the field. The Frenchmen could not get the ball away from those deadly, deadly center mids for Italy who kept the ball in play. Now the Italians making another advance. The, the uh, Omnicron wants to put this one away, not give these French strikers a chance to get a shot. We see a push in the back. It's going to be a foul on Zidane or no? Well, it looked, this on? Yeah, it looked like he just put Totti, it Totti definitely caused the foul, and now Galeas with the free kick. The ball is up. It's in the air. It's going to be a long ball down the field. We're going to see France trying to use these long ball type, long ball type plays because we are in the 76th minute of this second match. He is down by two goals. Two goals are easy to make up for this German player, as he showed us yesterday when he won in aggregate play 20 to nil <laughs> against the Argentine. And we've got a chance. A breakaway. Vieri takes the shot. And the goal, the keeper overcommits. What a nice, nice job and execution by the striker Vieri. Patrick Vieira there, the uh, Italian, uh, the French player there, makes it 3-2 to, it, uh, to Italy. France clawing one back there with Vieira, and now it comes forward. It's going to be Lizarazu to put it forward. Desta going to try and clear the danger before Zidane can get to him. Zidane's still in the danger area. Hoof back up field. Just one goal in it with 10 minutes to go. This is a really exciting game of uh, FIFA 2004 at the World Cyber Games with Radio ITG. Yes, <laughs> I'm glad you got that one in because I can't even think about who I work for right now because this match is incredible to watch. The through ball to the Frenchman doesn't get a chance. A little shove in the back, not called by the Italians, and we have a breakaway situation. Oh, Vieri no. just missed his pass. It was two on one on the defender. The defender says, I better check space. And that was a good idea by him because he broke that scoring opportunity up. Here come the Italians. Oh, just narrowly offside. Desai stepping up at the right time to deny Vieri the shooting opportunity. It's going to be Gallas to hoof it downfield. I see just four minutes left on the clock here. Four minutes for France to get one to draw this match. 
Now they come forward. It's going to be Gallas to the Vieri. Vieri trying to get through on the best of Patrick Vieri. No, denied there. Desai clears the danger, but the ball is still with Italy. They come in forward. It's Del Piero. Edge of the penalty area. Going to take a long shot. Going to step through to Vieri. It's going to be the save by Martez. That and was, it was so close. That was a beautiful save by the keeper. Excellent execution by the Italian striker. He just can't follow up, but Italy's not going to go out without a fight. You're going to have another shot and a beautiful oh. save. This French keeper is on fire in this second half. A lot of great saves. The corner kick is up. It's in the air. The head, no, he can't get a chap on it. But uh, Italy still pressuring the ball. We're in the 90th minute, extra time. Can the Frenchman come back and get something going on? Are we going to hear the whistle? We see a run down the field. Zidane looking for a target. Is Henry there? No, he's not. And the <laughs> Italian defender stepping up. And this is game, folks. Omnicron from the Netherlands upsetting Schmier in this game. We're going to number three. Can you believe that? That was a game fit for any league, any occasion, and any tournament because that was gold, gold, gold. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how they're going to handle the home and away. I don't know if it's going to be a, uh, a coin toss or look at that right there. That was beautiful, beautiful. But, you uh, have to say, this game was won by the goalkeeper. Both Buffon and Bartes, the French goalkeeper, having a fantastic match here. And I mean, that French goalkeeper right at the end, that could have been six six goals for the Italians had it not been for Fabian Bartes. I'm going to set this server up, so... Just uh, just take this opportunity to, uh, to give a big shout-out to our, uh, our sponsors at Radio ITG, that is GameCloud, and, of course, the sponsors here at the World Cyber Games, that is, of course, NVIDIA, Samsung, Shuttle, and... I'm sure I'm missing one. NVIDIA, Samsung, Shuttle, and who am I missing? NVIDIA, uh, Samsung, Shuttle, and there's they're right creative, there. creative. That's the last one I'm missing. <laughs> you were giving me a hard time. Of, and Shuttle? Did you? Yeah, I said Shuttle. All right. <laughs> now we're just going to wait up on this game. Um, I, I imagine they might do a coin toss or something to see who gets to be the home team. Not that it's a big deal, but, you know. Right. You might get a home team advantage on some of the calls by your, your refs. Some of that pushing and shoving um, might might get a whistle in your favor, might get a free kick in your favor. And if you can get a free kick with a cross from Zidane to Henry, that is an advantage that you definitely want. Well, let me let me just clear up one thing for you, Ed. In the French center midfielder, Patrick Vieira, the Italian striker is Christine Vieri. Exactly. Uh, they're both spelled very similar. Yeah, just uh, one, one little difference. Vieri uh, versus Vieira. Vieri, obviously the Italian goal scorer. Goal the scorer. Of the match in the last one. <laughs> yes, indeed. And Vieira, the center mid for the French team? Yes. All right. I am going to run over here and check and find out what's going on. Toss, can you take it away for a little bit? I don't know. Can I? I don't know. You're pretty good <laughs> at this. <laughs> we shall find out. This is Radio ITG at the World Cyber Games 2004. And um, as a, I mean, as a spectacle, FIFA 2004 has really come up trumps. Everyone seems to be taking around, uh, taking a look at this game now. Uh, I mean, we've been filmed so many times, just sitting here casting FIFA. Maybe it's because we're screaming a little bit too much, but it's so exciting. It is like being there at a real game of football, except you can meet the player afterwards. You can go down, you can say, "Good game." I mean, I've got to know gamer number one and chapter quite well during this tournament, and. Um, just fantastic to be a part of. Um, I mean, this has become you know, one of the. To me, it's be, definitely been a surprise. But of course, overall, it's been more than just a surprise. It's been uh, the Gapmans knew why it was quite what this game could deliver. I mean, they put it as an exhibitional match in front of the VIPs earlier, and it has delivered. Uh, it, undoubtedly, it's exciting. It's everything. It's everything that is a dream to cast because you have the. Uh, Ed and I were talking about this yesterday. You have um, the end product. When you're playing, say, a Return to Castle Wolfenstein, you, there's no real end product other than it being transmitted. But after it's transmitted, it's sometimes a foregone conclusion that it will be transmitted. But yeah. in the football, you've no idea when the end product is going to come. Suddenly it's a one wonder goal that, and you scream. I got a real shocker for you. It was aggregate play. Oh, I was hoping to see a third match, and apparently that eight-goal deficit came and bit Omni Rocket in the arse because he won that second match and it was a great show by him 
but it was all for naught because he could not make up that deficit. For those of you who are not aware how aggregate play works, it is a home and away situation, and whichever player has the most goals at the end of the second game is going to win in advance. I'm not sure if I, I, I agree with that in single elimination bracket play. A best of three, I think, is probably a better way to go. But this isn't my tournament. This is their tournament, and it's running efficiently for a reason because they've got a, uh, a formula, and it works. Well, Schmeiser can count his chickens very lucky because that game could have gone either way. It must have finished up then 7-4 on aggregate. Yeah. I mean, just had uh, Omni Rocket being just a little bit more on the ball in the first game, a little bit more alert than we could have seen him take the victory. Yeah. Omni Rocket can count himself unlucky. Schmeiser now, after that defeat, has to realize that he is beatable. Maybe we're going to see him not be so cocky. Not that he is cocky. Well, actually, I'm going to say this guy is cocky. He's I don't believe he is. Well, he didn't want to play yesterday on the server because he said, oh, there's, there's a lag with the relay to the television. And then he's just real particular, I guess. Well, I believe when you practice this much, when you put this much amount of time into your game, that you have the right to be particular. I, I agree. But you shouldn't be. Just cut him Schmeiser, some slack, Ed. Sch Schmeier also, he is the, uh, he's the he's the German that... Uh, bully. What? Bully. Big bully. Who, me? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's the one that had uh, altered his config. And we had to change the, change the, slow things down because of him. Well... He I had to replay all of his matches with a standard config. And... The referees were hoping that it would just, well, not hoping, but were lobbying for a uh, for a uh, disqualification, and that didn't happen. 